Hi, yogis. Lizzie Lassiter here. I have a clip for you today from Mary Richards and our course Deep Rest, which is about just that, somatic self-care for exhaustion. So this is a few minutes from the very first lesson in the course. We're calling it a science lab because Mary, in all of her brilliance, walks us through the connection between the brain and the body. And some of the physiological processes and a deeper understanding of the kind of scientific background that many yoga teachers and yoga practitioners will be very interested to learn. So I hope you enjoy it. The course is available on our learning platform, www.lassiter.yoga. But the absolute best place to stay in the loop about all our future offerings is by going to experientialanatomy.yoga. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll get all the announcements. You'll be the first to know. So enjoy. Hello, Mary Richards. Hello, Lizzie Lassiter. Welcome to our week one science lab. It is wonderful to be with you. Mary is joining us from her lair in Virginia. <laughs> That's what we call it. That's exactly what it is. I. I lurk about in my lair. She writes, she moves, she teaches. So give us an overview. This is our first science lab. What are these segments for in this course? So the first segment, uh, we're going to talk, we're going to do an overview, if you will, of sort of the fundamental essence of asana practice, which is brain to body, body to brain. Mm -hmm. Asana is both a top down and a bottom up practice. Mm -hmm. And in order to leverage that to facilitate comfort and robustness on and off the mat, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like us to have a general idea of how we create movement based on ideas, how the body corrects that movement and also how the, the body is not just the body. We mm -hmm. really have no separation between body, mind, heart, and spirit. Mm. So if you've ever heard the term psychosomatic, yes, you know, it used to be used in a derogatory way. But what research has demonstrated uh, especially the fields of neuroscience and um, mental health is that psychosomatic actually is a great synopsis of how we actually work <laughs> because there is no separation between our feelings, our bodily mm -hmm. feelings and sensations and our emotions. Mm. Okay. So before we jump into today's material, just give us a one sentence if you can, tie it in for us. How does this psychosomatic concept connect with deep rest? What is the, what's the bridge for you? Well, I don't know about you, but my bias is when I'm not feeling well, either physically or emotionally, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. I have a bias toward, I need to eat kale chips with nutritional yeast, or I need to <laughs> do downward facing dog. I have a bias toward taking some sort of action. Cheesecake. But, <laughs> right. Or, yeah. I mean, I'm just, you know, if we're being honest. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheesecake like or kale maybe chips. Prosecco or I don't know, or coffee. Yeah. Uh, but we will we will do something, and and really what we're learning, uh, in particular thanks to the pioneering work of folks like Stephen Porges uh, and Bessel van der Kolk, uh, is that in reality if we stop and and connect to the sensations of the body that will reveal our 
heart and mind state in a way that we move on the spectrum of reactivity toward responsiveness. Ooh, that sounds really nice. Yes. So instead of engaging in, you know, a knee jerk reaction, we become aware of the stimuli and its effect upon us. And then we can make choices as to what we would like to do. Mm -hmm. And it's the, and it, the, the power lies in the choice. Mm -hmm. Yet we can't access that power unless we're aware that we have a choice. And so by using our wonderful uh, self-corrective movement systems and our psychosomatic reality, mm -hmm. we can actually unlearn behaviors that do not help us meet our needs. And we can instead connect to our own inherent birthright wisdom, mm. which Richard Miller, uh, who created iRest, Integrative Restoration, and whose work I, I hold in very high regard, mm -hmm. is that we can then connect, we, we actually know what we need to do. But see, yeah. we have all of this interference. I mean, if we think about it in the yogic system, we have maya, mm -hmm. illusion. Mm -hmm. and, and what we can do from, a, with, from an understanding of our psychosomatic reality is we can polish the mirror. Mm -hmm. And so this is why rest is so important and yeah. not just plopping down on the floor or on the couch and, you know, binge watching a series or something like that. That's not actually, listen, I've watched Fitz Creek three times and I'm not ashamed of it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, but the, the, the point is that's, that's not actually helpful to us. That's actually disassociative mm -hmm. and, and what we can use asana and pranayama and restorative yoga and yoga nidra for mm -hmm. they are incredibly useful highly refined tools that allow us to work the super highway mm -hmm. from the body to the mind from the mind to the body with control are mm -hmm. one of our favorite illusions. Yeah. And at the at, at the pace of our life, of our lived experience. Mm -hmm. See, if we're constantly trying to change our lived experience, how do we even know where to start? I love this, Mary, because what it says to me, what I'm hearing is that you're going to teach us in this course, remind us, review, help us deepen our understanding of this deep rest toolkit pranayama, restorative, yoga nidra, somatic exploration, among other things. And in this toolkit, what you're saying is going to help us to connect our psyche and soma, our body and mind in real time when we're off the mat. Is that what you're saying? It, yes, Lizzie, mm -hmm. I feel that my work is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 